It comes forward, I go left, right. That right foot forward comes first step, and then I flip my hips ready to make that throw right there. Meet Willie Korn. He's the co-offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Liberty University. Let's go execute, buddy. He's also that guy on the headset who calls the plays for this explosive Flames offense. Salter in the shotgun gets the snap. Play action. And the pocket throws towards the end zone. Wide open. Bentley Hanshaw, the tight end. Strike to stone. Touchdown, Liberty. I can remember being young and always kind of thinking, Coaching would be a pretty fun gig. My dad was a, was a former coach. My dad coached us in Little League, and uh, so I always kind of thought, like, that'd be a really fun gig to get into. You know, baseball is what we did together. I think the coaching certainly gave us an excuse to spend just time, just us together, just me and Willie. I think we always talked about things that would make you a good coach, maybe just indirectly. But before he would follow in his father's footsteps in coaching, he would remain the one coached. In high school, Willie would eventually focus on just football, becoming one of the best quarterbacks in South Carolina history. Burns are looking for their fifth straight state title behind the arm of Willie Korn, one of the nation's top quarterbacks. Well, he had so much success and Burns had so much success. It was, uh, it was really memorable and, and, and a lot of fun. Willie Korn, the number four rated quarterback in the country, top 30 recruit overall. He's committed to Clemson. You see his numbers, 2,000. At Clemson, Willie was assumed to be the next guy under center until the adversity would hit. And I battled injuries my whole time when I was at Clemson. Um, fractured my collarbone my freshman year, uh, tore my labor my second year. And, you know, I was, I was not raised to be this way, but my identity just became me as, as the football player, as a quarterback. And when things were going good, it was great. And when things weren't going good during all those injuries, it was really frustrating. And I lost a lot of my joy. It must have seemed so hard for him in there. I remember one day in particular, and it's like the one time where I saw him is just. So he just, he uh, lays down on the couch and just puts his hands like this over his eyes and says, I just wish this was all over. It was just difficult uh, for a dad to watch how tough it was for him. But he didn't quit. He didn't quit at all. Willie would decide to leave Clemson while his dad would send out letters trying to find a new home for his son to play college football, which is where Jamie Chadwell comes into the picture. When I was in the head coach in North Greenville, 2010, we're trying to figure some things out and his dad sent me an email. Hi, Coach. I left a message on your phone, but was not sure if you would call me back. I'm contacting you because of my son, Willie. I know you have a quarterback background and are trying to build a program. I would prefer to have him home with us playing quarterback at an area school. I would like to talk more. Please call at your earliest convenience. Thanks for your time, Coach, and I wish you good luck. Larry Korn. Coach Chadwell would reply later that day and would meet with Willie shortly after. Willie gets back in the car and says, yeah, I, th I, think, I think this is the place. That two years there, we were together as far as coaching him was, and I was coaching quarterbacks at that time. It was, for a, for a new head coach, it was, it was a great experience. And, uh, and that's when this relationship really started beginning. That's where my, my joy for the game was restored. A big piece of it was getting the opportunity to get on the field and actually play and compete. So that was a big piece of it, but that was, I wouldn't say that's, that was the only piece because on a much bigger scale, I gave my life to Jesus my senior year when I was at North Greenville. My mindset shifted from a, from a temporary mindset to an eternal mindset. And it would reflect on the field. Willie would go on to earn All-America honors after leading North Greenville to the NCAA Division II quarterfinals in 2011. And when his playing days were over, a childhood dream would be reborn. Back foot lead, reset, step up. Yeah. Step it up. There you go. Good. When you get removed from the game, when that when you're when you play your last snap, the closest thing that you can get to that that adrenaline and the camaraderie is is coaching, being a part of it. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Right down the field. Right down the so field. So it wasn't too long after I was done playing that I knew, okay, this is the route I wanted to go. And thankfully Coach Chowell gave me the opportunity to get into it. Thirteen years and four schools later. 
The two are still coaching together, but more importantly, guiding young men on this journey of life. Uh, the opportunity for them to, to lead and push through adversity, I pray for. Uh, I think I look at it from a, from a different lens because I know what it's like to sit in that chair and, and, and get beat out and not win the starting job. Disappointed because you're not the same player you thought you were. Disappointed because injuries. He played at a high level, he was recruited at a high level, and things didn't work out. So I think he understands the pressures of the expectations. And then maybe they didn't work out the way people thought they worked out, but they worked out right for him. You know, I'm just so happy because he's exactly the kind of human being I would have wanted him to be in his profession, with his family. I, I, I would want to play for him. If I could be a kid again, <laughs> I want him to be my dad. And that's about the highest praise I can, I can give him.